Hey everyone, this is Owen with Motion Array, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a halftone effect inside of After Effects. All right, let's get started. I'll begin by making a new composition. So I'll name this halftone, and I'll make sure it's 1920 by 1080, 2997. Then I'll hit OK. Inside my new composition, I'll add a new solid by going to Layer, New, Solid, and I'll make sure it's comp sized, and I'll name it Background. Then I'll hit OK. Then I'll create another new solid, and this one will also be comp sized, and I'm going to name this Grid. On the Grid layer, I'll go to Effect, Simulation, CC Ball Action. CC Ball Action creates a grid of balls, and they have some shading to them to give it a 3D look. So this is what we're going to use as the basis of our halftone pattern. In the Ball Action settings, I'm going to change the ball size to 30, and then I'll go up to Effect, Channel, Invert. And that'll just turn all the balls black, and that's really what we're looking for. Then with my grid layer still selected, I'm going to go to Layer, Precompose. I'll name the precomposition Grid, and I'm going to move all attributes into the new composition. Next, I'll bring in the footage that I want to turn into halftone. So I've got some footage here from Motion Array, but you use whatever you have available to you. Once I drag in that footage, I'm going to pre-compose that as well. And I'll name the pre-composition footage, and then I'll hit OK. I'll go ahead and turn off the sound on this because I won't be using it. And then I'm going to duplicate the footage layer. I'll change the name of this duplicated footage layer to inverted. And then I'll go up to Effect, Channel, Invert. Now I can just turn off the visibility of both these footage layers for now. I'll select my grid layer and go to Effect, Blur, Camera Lens Blur. Then under Blur Map Layer, I'm going to choose the inverted footage, and I need to change it from Source to Effect and Mask. That way it'll take into account the invert that I just put onto it. Then I'll go up to Effect, Color Correction, Levels. In my level settings, I'm going to change the channel from RGB to Alpha. And then I'm just going to crush these white and black values. And you can see as I'm doing that, that my image is starting to come into focus a little bit more. Yeah, that's starting to look pretty good. Now I'll stack some similar effects on top of these to just bring out a little bit more detail. So I'll go up to Effect, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And in the blurriness, I'll set that to 5. And then I'll just go ahead and apply another Levels. And again, I'll switch to Alpha as the channel, and I'll crush in the values. And so if I turn those off, you can see the difference. We're getting a little bit more contrast, and the blacks are a little bit punchier. And that'll just bring out a little bit more detail. So the last thing I'll do to enhance the halftone effect is I'll bring that footage layer that I turned off a little while ago up to the top of the layer stack and I'll change its opacity down to about 18%. So you can see the difference there. It's just bringing in some color and sharpening up some details. So that does it for the halftone effect itself, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a transition from the regular footage to the halftone effect just to add a little bit more interest. To do that, I'm gonna go to Layer, New, Solid, and I'm gonna make this one 1920 by 1920. So with that new solid selected, I'll go up to my ellipse tool and I'll double click it, and that'll create a circular mass, the exact bounding box of the solid. So since it's a 1920 by 1920 square, it's a perfect circle. Inside my mask settings, I'll go to the mask expansion and I'll go ahead and drag this value down to negative 960. So that'll completely eliminate that solid. I'll set a keyframe at zero frames and then I'll move my playhead to about 115. And I'll change that value to whatever it takes to fill up that whole screen. So I'm looking at about 160. I'll right click that second keyframe and go to Keyframe Assistant, Easy Ease, and then I'll right click it again and go to Keyframe Velocity and set that incoming velocity influence to 80% to give us a nice ease. So that's the way our animation is looking right now. I just need to add the regular footage and use this white circle as a mat. So I'll grab my footage layer and duplicate that and I'll bring up its opacity and bring that all the way back up to 100%. Then under track mat, I'll change it to alpha inverted. 
And by doing that, I've got my footage and wherever the white circle is, my footage disappears. So that's going to give us that nice circle transition to our halftone effect. So that we can see the actual footage a little bit more before it transitions, I'm going to grab these two keyframes and I'm going to drag them out to say 15 frames. That way we can see the footage a little bit more. And then I'm going to also add a transition out so that we go back to the footage. To do that, I'm going to duplicate this mask and I'll pull up its keyframes and I'll slide those keyframes to probably three seconds. And I'll change the mode to subtract. So now when I preview, I've got a transition in and out from the halftone. Well, that concludes this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you did and you'd like to see more tutorials, please go ahead and subscribe because we're making new ones all the time. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.